When you head into Google Ads to create a new campaign, you have a ton of options of campaign types to choose from, but have you ever considered a discovery campaign? Now, unlike search and display, which are really obvious what they are and what they do, Discovery campaigns are a little bit different and they can really help you reach more new customers. And it's a campaign type I think a lot of advertisers could consider testing. So in this video, we're gonna explain what a discovery campaign is, how they work, and at the end of the video, we're gonna do a full tutorial of how you can go ahead and set up your very own discovery campaign coming up. Hey guys, Darren Taylor of TheBigMarketer.com here and my job is to make you a better PPC marketer. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm Darren Taylor, a trainer and consultant. I specialize in PPC, so paid search, all things PPC. If that sounds of interest to you, you should consider subscribing to the channel. And in this video, we're exploring discovery campaigns. So let's start off by understanding what a discovery campaign actually is. Discovery campaigns are very similar to display campaigns in that they are a reach based advertising model. You want to reach as many people fitting your target audience as possible. And Google describes the discovery campaigns as campaigns that enable advertisers to deliver rich, personalized ad experiences to people who are ready to discover and engage with their brands, all through a single ads campaign. So in true Google fashion, that explanation is a little bit simplistic. It doesn't really give you an idea of what these campaigns are. So let's put it more simply. Discovery campaign allow you to use pretty much all the targeting options available on display advertising, but it allows you to reach customers in places you couldn't reach them before, including YouTube adverts, Gmail adverts, and most importantly, the discovery panel on Android smartphone devices. Now to my iPhone people and people who don't understand what this is, essentially, if you have an Android smartphone device, usually what you can do is when you're on the home page of your device, you can swipe right, and that will allow you to see kind of a news feed, not dissimilar to Facebook, books with general interest stories based on your demographics. So if you like sports, you'll see some sports articles. If you want news and politics, you'll see the latest political articles. Whatever your interests, Google will target and tailor a feed of content right in your palm of your hand from your smartphone within this discovery feed. And the great news is you can advertise in this very feed that's in the very hands of a lot of your customers. So with that said, why should you use a discovery campaign? Well, all of the advantages of the display network, which I've explained in a previous video which I've linked up in the description below apply equally to discovery campaigns. You can reach a ton of people for very little cost. You can be quite sophisticated in your targeting in terms of audiences and demographics, particularly in market audience. If you're selling a product or service where you're trying to reach somebody who's in the market or who Google deems are in the market right now looking for your services, it's a great audience you can use to improve your campaigns and reach your potential customers really early. But of course, the same caveat as the display network applies. If you're stuck in last click attribution land, then unfortunately this method of advertising won't be good for you because you can't attribute previous clicks to the conversion. And if you're using a more sophisticated attribution model like time decay or even linear, then you can attribute this campaign performance to the end goal of your sales process. So you can reach a ton of customers and introduce your brand to them for the first time. And it's a quite a powerful way to engage with potential customers. So now that you understand exactly what a discovery campaign is in terms of putting ads in front of people who could be interested in your services, particularly in that discovery feed, let's take a look at how we set these up. And it's really interesting because they have a different ad format to display. So it's really interesting to see specifically how you can build your ads for this format. But before I go into that, if you like what you're hearing so far, like the video and let me know, question of the day, are you planning to trial a discovery campaign or have you already done one? Let me know what the results were like or let me know in the comments if you're thinking of starting a discovery campaign now. So let's get on with the tutorial. We're gonna set up a discovery campaign right now. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a discovery campaign on Google Ads. So we're gonna promote this website here, which is a plumbers. Bobsplumbers.co.uk is a plumbing website. So we're gonna use this particular business example to create the campaign. So let's head over to campaigns and then create a new campaign 
as you normally would. Now, as I always do, I create a campaign without a goal to give myself the maximum number of options available. And then instead of creating a search campaign, we are going to create a discovery campaign. Hit continue. And then when you hit continue, you'll be taken to the usual campaign page where you've got to name your campaign and choose your target locations. I'm going to call this the one Bob's Plumbers Discovery. Okay, and then United Kingdom's my target area, but in fact, I'm going to change that. I'm going to change it to London to make it more specific. Obviously, choose your target area for your campaigns. My language is set to English, so that's fine. Bidding wise, bidding strategy, what I'm going to show you now is not a huge important part. This is the part where you choose your strategy based on what you want to focus on. I want to focus on conversions. I want to set a target cost per action of £50 because, again, if you took my AdWords course, you would know that selecting your target cost per action in a reasonable threshold that will give your campaign a good target cost per action, but also not stretch it too much to the point where Google can't optimize. That's important. But for the purposes of this demonstration, what I'm going to show you is just literally how to set up a discovery campaign. The budget, again, up to you on your campaign keyword research and volume research, but I'm going to put the budget as £100 per day in this example. That wasn't important. What, what's important, because this all of what I've done before is, is, I guess, not unique to setting up a discovery campaign. That's the same setup process for pretty much all campaign types. Next, we're going to go on and create our discovery campaign itself. So let's okay, so next we're going to look at naming the ad group as you normally would. I'm going to call this one People in Market for Plumbing. Okay, so the reason I've called it that is because of the targeting which we're going to go on to next for the audiences. I'm going to use an in-market audience and target people interested in plumbing. So for me to do that, I'm going to head over to in-market audiences. I'll go down to home improvements, wherever that may be. Home and garden. And then within home and garden, I'm going to go into home improvements. And then I'll click plumbing fixtures. So you see my in-market audience is selected as plumbing fixtures. So people interested in improving their home through plumbing services. I'm going to target that in-market audience with a discovery campaign. So again, for your campaigns, you need to choose your target audience. And the audiences you get to choose from are exactly as you would in a display campaign in terms of in-market affinity and the detailed demographics as well. So you can layer your targeting with demographics as well. So if you wanted to target people with potentially a parental status, marital status, education, home ownership in the US, you can also target by income. Um, so you can target and layer your targeting the same way you would with a display campaign. So let's carry on. Now I've selected my audience for the campaign. Let's look at the demographics. I'm happy for males and females and unknown. I think the ages of 18 to 24 is a bit too young for people who will invest in home improvement services and everything else I'm quite happy with. Parent, not a parent, doesn't matter. So for your campaigns, you need to decide on your demographics you would like to target specifically and just layer it on top of your initial targeting like I've done here. We're targeting people interested in plumbing and people who fit my target demographic, so not the ages of 18 to 24. Next, you want to create your ads. Now, this is a different part altogether because the ad format for a discovery campaign is very unique. So let's go ahead and create our ads. So you've got two options here. You can create a discovery carousel ad or a discovery ad itself. So essentially, the discovery carousel ads allow you to have a carousel of images within your advert in order to promote your services. And if you want to use a discovery ad, it's the same idea, just a static image or a static advert that doesn't carousel in interaction. So let's create a standard discovery ad in the first instance. So you'll notice the ad format settings, a lot of them will be quite similar. You've got your final URL, you've got images and logos, which are very similar to the responsive display ads you can have on display campaign. So you can choose a logo as long as the dimensions are, I guess, a ratio of one to one, so a square logo. And you can choose images for the ad as well. You can choose headlines, descriptions up to five. So again, these up to five headlines and up to five descriptions, even though the character counts are different, is in 40 characters for the headline as opposed to the usual 30. And the description, again, is the same as it normally is. 
but it's a very similar format to a responsive search ad in that you can add multiple headlines and multiple descriptions and Google will use its AI technology to serve the ones best and more likely to provide conversions in your campaign. Again, you've got the usual advanced URL options if you wanted to use them and add templates to your tracking and then call to action text as well. So you can see this button here says visit site as the example is showing, but you can choose a specific call to action if you'd like, or you can ask Google to automate it for you and let Google guess which one will lead to more conversions. But again, if you know what the action is at the end of your, com of your campaign, then it's important to select one that fits that reaction. So in our instance, we want people to book an appointment. So click on book now for us because that's what we want people to do with their plumbing service, book an appointment for a plumber to come out to you. And the language of course is English because we're in the United Kingdom targeting London. So now we've got all of this in place, we know exactly what we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to write an ad and show you what it looks like when we get to a completed ad. Okay, so I've completed all areas apart from images and I wanna show you why that is. So the final URL is in place. I've written five headlines and three descriptions, even though you can add up to five, I think three is perfectly a good enough number for Google to use. So I've got five, five headlines, three descriptions. I've added my business name as well, which is a needed field, a necessary field. I've changed my call to action to book now, the language is English. So my ad is pretty much ready to go. I'd, all I need to do is select my logo image and also select another image for the advert to use as well. So when you click on images and logos, what Google will do is it will scan your website for existing images and allow you to import them directly into your, ca into your campaign. Now, sometimes it doesn't find images very well. So as you can see, it's not found any. So it's not found any of the images on the website at all, including this one or this one. It's not really found them for whatever reason that may be. But that's okay because Google also offer you stock images as well. So say, for example, I want to use a stock image. I can use an image of something like this. So I could use that image. I could use... So this image would be good for, for the campaign, showing pipes being fitted. So I'll use that as an image. It can't be a logo because a logo needs to be a square logo, a one-to-one -one ratio. So we'll go back to results and it can't be used as a logo image. So we've got a few images we can use, including this one. You can also change and adjust the dimensions as well. So if you want to focus on a particular part of the image, you can also do that as well. So you can use it as an image and you can select another ratio if you wanted to as well. So use the, I guess, the stock images to help you fulfill all the image requirements you need when you're creating your campaigns. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a few more images to use for the campaign. Okay, so I've selected a number of images for Google to use and test to see whether or not they perform within the discovery tab of the campaigns. So let's hit save. So I've got some images, but I haven't got a logo yet. And a logo needs to be a one-to-one -one ratio image so I'm gonna go ahead and upload the logo as well. So if you haven't got a logo that fits a one-to-one -one square size, you need to resize your logo image in order to get it to fit within the campaign. And you can't run a discovery campaign without a square one-to-one -one ratio logo, because as you can see, the advert's got all the components here, but it's missing here with this gray default image, the logo, and it's gonna be round, and it needs to fit in a perfect square. So I'm gonna upload a logo image now. Okay, so I have now added a logo image, so that's been uploaded. You might be able to see it here very, very slightly, but it's essentially a blue circle with the orange logo in the middle. This is not similar to the website colors, and the logo is in place. So now we have completed all the fields that's needed for this ad format. Now we need to go ahead and add it to an ad group and create the campaign. Now, of course, you can add it to an ad group and add multiple variations of ads as well. So don't be limited just be by my example of showing you how to create the ad itself. Go ahead and create as many ads as you'd like to test. Usually an A-B test is enough, but because you've got multiple options for descriptions and headlines, that can often be good enough for a test as well in itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the campaign. 
So as you can see, it says, congratulations, your campaign is ready. Then you continue to the campaign if you want to see it in Google Ads and make edits to the campaign. So that's exactly how you can create a discovery campaign. And remember, this will show up on the discovery panel on smartphone, Android smartphones. It will show up in Gmail ads. It will show up on YouTube ads. So these are great ad formats to get a, a good amount of reach and for very little cost as well in terms of the amount of reach you can get. So if you like this video, please leave a like below. Let me know in the comments if you plan to use a discovery campaign and test it for yourself. More important than that, check out the other content across my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on my very next video.